Hello everyone, my name is Pepsilk and I've been playing the heck out of Destiny 2's latest expansion, The Final Shape. It's been a banger to say the least, through and through. Sporting some of Destiny's best moments, a captivating and intense story, plenty of new content and a future to be excited for. The first time I've been excited for the series since The Taken King back in D1. Playing through it, I took notice of the soundtrack, with the Michaels doing their best job, and has some of the best songs I've heard. Bungie aren't one to disappoint when it comes to their OSTs as seen with their previous games and Destiny expansions made me think about going back to what I regard as the best Halo game ever made. And that's Halo 3 ODST. Halo 3 ODST is a DLC or full-fledged game if you want to call it that. Developed and handled by Bungie, introducing a new set of characters, a new storyline, and the Firefly game mode, which I will be covering for this video, but in a nutshell, it's a co-op horde mode where you kill waves of Covenant and go for that sweet high score with modifiers to make things harder or easier. It's a fun and great concept that would end up getting expanded upon within Reach. There were no multiplayer components added with ODST, so I'll only be talking about the campaign. ODST is what I like to refer to as an expansion. Kind of like those old story expansions games used to do such as Half-Life Opposing Force, Diablo 2's Lord of Destruction and Starcraft Brood War, and takes place during and after the events of Halo 2, leading into Halo 3. And instead of playing the badass Master Chief like you've been playing for the past three installments, you play as ODSTs or Orbital Drop Shock Troopers the best of the best within the UNSC's army force. The intro defines this perfectly, giving us a short overview of the game's setting being in New Mombasa, one of the biggest cities on earth and being attacked by the Covenant, to a point where the forces become overwhelming, leading people to evacuate the city. It reminds me of Star Wars when the information pans down, establishing the movie or game's story before it even begins. And it's something that Bungie never did before and to this day is the only game from them that's done this. I'm surprised they didn't integrate this for the final shape because I think it would have been fitting given that it's the end of the light and dark saga. It's interesting to me because I think that Bungie really wanted to expand the battle on earth since the Halo 2 E3 demo back in the day showed a lot of fighting on earth but the final product barely had any missions set there. Bungie games have always been about strong introductions and ODST is no different, introducing the team that you'll be playing as. Buck is the leader of the team. But efficient and able to think on the spot. Mickey is a demolitions expert who doesn't seem to fit into this war judging from his tone. Hey, where's the fight at? Take a guess, genius. His naiveness and somewhat confidence make up for this and is a great asset for the team. <laughs> this day ain't turning out so bad after all. Dutch is the broad member of the group. Brave, loves big guns, and always willing to go in head first, if it means pushing the Covenant back. So, 
Was that a yes or a no? Amen. Romeo is the sarcastic jokester of the group, always trying to keep her bright in a world so dark, and a great marksman. Easy does it. We went through hell for that? Give him some there is the newly assigned captain of the group straight from Oni, which is Halo's brass and tries to keep the mission classified to everyone except for Buck, as they have history together, having a love interest in the past. She's cunning and always tries to do things herself, which you'll learn more about later in the game. And last but not least, we have the one ODST that brings it all together, the Rookie. The silent protagonist, he serves as the game's tape as he tries to put the pieces back together. Now that we've established the game's characters, I want to go over what makes this game great. So get some popcorn, sit your asses down, and get set for a combat drop. The game starts off with this amazing drop pod sequence with Buck telling the fellas that we're dropping into hell. Just remember, ODST did it first before Helldivers did. Can you imagine? A Helldivers Halo collab with ODST suits. Ugh, I'm straying away from the video. F As they drop, a massive Covenant ship enters slip space, causing an EMP blast and effectively disables all of the drop pods, forcing emergency landings. It's night time and the rookie finally wakes up after being out for a few hours, with no communications from his team or any idea on where he's landed, effectively beginning his journey, which I think the majority of players will coincide with the most. Halo 3 ODST portrays one particular theme really well that no other game does, and that's the feeling of loneliness. Loneliness is the feeling of sadness resulting from being isolated or abandoned, and playing through the rookie as you navigate through the new Mombasa streets at night really enforces this, as if you're walking past an aftermath of an invasion that ended, no friendlies or support in sight. All you have is your gun, your eyes and ears. Playing this game at night with everyone sleeping or living by yourself hits completely different and gives you a sort of perspective of what it's like to be the last one standing due to this overwhelming force that seems impossible to stop. To show this, the Covenant sweep in with reinforcements and phantoms to secure the territory for themselves while they complete their main objective which I'll explain later. The rookie acts as a detective, scanning and looking for clues as to where the team may have gone, which for every item he finds, takes us to a flashback mission hours before. He plays all of the ODSTs, each offering their own missions and moments, and while I feel like the game can be linear at times with how it's structured, there's enough sandbox elements to each of them that it offers a good amount of variety to how you want to approach each mission. You play as Buck in Tayari Plaza as tries to get to Dare's drop pod before the Covenant overwhelm her, which is a simple mission of shooting and scooting. Uplift Reserve has you play as Dutch, where you help the UNSC soldiers and drive a warthog through a ton of Covenant, being one of the personal highlights. Playing this level on Heroic or Lower and watching your turret buddy rinse all of the aliens is a great time. The pacing is really good too, having different sections of opponents and vehicles to change the way you play. This is probably the one level in the game that has a ton of sandbox and many ways to approach it. Vicky becomes the main character for Kazingo Boulevard, another highlight for the game, driving a scorpion through the streets of Mombasa and following the troops to a site of incredible significance, linking up with Dutch in the process. The only alpha site is that important site and it switches back to Dutch, blowing up a freaking bridge and for the first time in the series, instead of being the aggressor, you're the defender as you're forced to push back into the site because of how strong the Covenant are. The ODSTs aren't super soldiers, they're humans like us who are just fighting to defend their home and can't take a dozen of them like the Master Chief can. They're vulnerable and scared. The defense sequence here was really cool too, using a turret to defend two sides of where the Covenant can come from, coupled with a cheeky flank from behind to try and pressure the soldiers from all angles. NMPDHQ puts you in the eyes of Romeo, seeing Dutch and Mickey's ship go down and Buck making the decision to go and rescue them. Sniping jetpack brutes and gunning your way through. This finishes up with one of the best sequences in any Halo game. A badass defensive hold with this amazing track playing through as you take out phantoms and banshees with missile turrets. It's freaking fantastic. Hikowani Station puts you back in the eyes of Buck, this time hijacking a phantom and escorting it whilst you're on a banshee. Easily the best mission in the game, as it's got everything. You're fighting Covenant in tight areas, you're fighting on the ground, you fight a Scarab at the end, you're blowing shit up, it's a freaking banger. 
Going back to present day, the rookie hears Dare's signal and follows her, leading into the data hive. You learn of her true mission, which is to escort a Covenant engineer who managed to merge the superintendent AI Virgil with its own and has valuable intel that could win them the war. In a nutshell, an escort mission with its own bits that come before it and plenty of buggers to shoot. You never got to truly see where they came from in Halo 3 and seeing the hive in the flesh is pretty cool. Finally, the game finishes up with an intense push to the finish, going through the waterfront highway to get to your squad mates and go home. I love this mission in particular because they have you switch different vehicles every so often at the stops. First starting with a machine gun warthog, then progressing to a ghost warthog to deal with the bigger and badder combatants, and finally, a scorpion. It's another escort level with variety that couples up with this cool final stand sequence as you defend from constant waves of enemies. It ain't no Halo 3 final mission warthog, but it suffices. Writing and reading this back has made me realize how much variety there is in ODST, despite it being a shorter game. They never recycled anything outside of those H3 assets, each mission offers something different and doesn't feel similar to one another, and managed to create a new story in the same universe, all in just a few years after Halo 3 released. It's mind-boggling that we get so few of these nowadays in favor of modern gaming pre-order bonuses and drip feeding content instead of just plain right giving it. ODST knocks the other Halo games out of the park when it comes to the atmosphere and use of lighting, and it shows from both day and night times of New Mombasa, more specifically Night Mombasa. The use of lighting is phenomenal and really shows the derelictness of the city with dead streets, destroyed cars and bodies lying around. It's crazy how Bungie showed off a lot of concept art for New Mombasa, and we're able to actually bring it to life to what it exactly looks like in the shots. The daytime parts are nothing crazy to me and felt very similar to Halo 3, but the skyboxes had some variety and looked great as always. One of the best things that Bungie has and can still do really well, even with Destiny. Halo has some of the best soundtracks in gaming and with this series, usually any of the games can be classified as the best soundtrack, with Martin O'Donnell doing what he does best. But Bungie decided to switch it up for ODST, offering a more quiet, jazz-influenced sound to slow the pace down and highlight the ODSTs as a more vulnerable, less powerful group of soldiers. For me, ODST has the best soundtrack of any Halo game and that is final. Every single song has its merit and highlights for the scenario that the player is in. Whether it's after the rookie discovers Dare's helmet and makes you question if your team is alive or not whilst continuing to explore with Deference for Darkness, Linking up with your squad for an all-out defense with Skyline, or holding the fort until your backup arrives with special delivery. There's a gem for every encounter in this game. The night music has to be some of the saddest stuff I've listened to. I always want to shed a tear when listening to any of these and given the context of the game, it fits perfectly. Kudos to Marty and Michael for putting this masterpiece of an OST together. Same, same, but different is the same. Marketing for Halo games has always been fantastic with live action trailers, gameplay footage and E3 demos showing what we're going to receive by the time it comes out. Microsoft never disappoint and I have to give them props for capitalizing as much as they could for ODST. Even Halo Infinite's marketing was great. Watching Joseph Staden back when he was at Bungie play ODST for the first time and the audience getting so hyped because of the big fan base that they created with Halo. Any fans of the old Halo 1 pistol out there? Yeah? If you like that one, you're gonna love this one. The live action trailer showing men getting trained to become a Marine as opposed to being trained to become the next Spartan. And the Johnson advertisement for Firefight. Oh man, that was so hype back in the day. And the pre-order was a fun loot of burners rather than content or freaking three days early access like the bullshit we get nowadays. It's awesome to watch these back and Look back on that era of gaming knowing how exciting it was for gamers and games at the time. And even though gaming at the moment is shaping to be exciting again given that 2023 is the best year so far in the decade. What do people say? We had it so good back then. Halo 3 ODST retains the same gameplay from Halo 3, but with some changes to reflect the ODSTs. Health packs return from combat evolved, which makes sense given that soldiers aren't gods with the power of might like the Master Chief. There's also a stamina system that's sort of like Master Chief shields, but there's a catch. It takes significantly longer to regenerate and can break pretty fast on high difficulty. So weapon wombo combos are a must to survive. 
Playing as a rookie during the Mombasa streets offers up a few unique options, such as being able to go around and explore the entire city, which you can do regardless of where you're at during the game, alongside an accompanying map and the new visor, a way of scanning the environments for enemies and items of interest to progress the story. It's a godsend during the night because you have very limited visibility and you can't really see much outside of the streetlights. Think of it as night vision. It's usable throughout the whole game and even though it's not good for the daytime levels, it's nice to have it there nevertheless. You know, for the immersion. The map shows you where you need to go as well as markers showing audio logs that you can collect throughout the city, detailing the life of the citizens that lived there before the invasion, as well as caches that the rookie can go to to get special gear. It's a nice addition and something that Halo had never done before at the time, something that would end up returning with 343's Halo Infinite built out like a semi-open world. Two new weapons got added which are the Silent SMG and Silent Pistol that even though it's cool to have and makes you feel like a covert operative, the guns aren't necessarily silenced as to shoot in the floor when I'm about 20 meters out to lure the Covenant to my presence. I'm surprised they never bothered to change or fix this. A change that interested me the most is the way grenades are thrown. In previous Halo games, the grenades would throw straight from where your crosshair is and would have a bit of a, an arc to it, encouraging players to work the trajectory and calculate those perfect throws from a distance. In ODST however, the grenades get thrown in like a full on arc, starting up and then going down. I don't understand what the philosophy was behind this change other than ODSTs being trained to throw grenades differently? You also can't use any equipment such as bubble shields and arc drains, which I find interesting because they're not related to Spartan shields or anything. I don't know, it's just weird. The legendary campaign wasn't too difficult with being able to complete some missions by simply walking past the enemies and going straight to the finish line. A coastal highway was a bitch. I died multiple times and you had to actually play like an escort mission, sticking behind the brig at all times and hoping to god that the ghost attracted at first before you, since the brutes have laser aim and decimate you in just a few shots. Outside of that, there wasn't too much bullshit or annoyances that I died to, and the sniper jackers don't one shot you, so that's nice. I played ODST on the PC and the huge suite of options offers many ways for players to customize and change the game, such as graphics, field of view and weapon offsets. I played ODST on the PC and the huge suite of options offers many ways for players to customize and change the game, such as graphics, field of view and weapon offsets. The game ran like butter so you shouldn't have any issues with the game at all. Pristine and in good condition, as all things should be. Halo 3 ODST stands the test of time as a game that only gets better with age. Tastes like fine wine, plays wonderfully on PC, and on any difficulty for that matter, and provides us with an entirely new storyline that helps to bridge the gap between Halo 2 and 3, ultimately leading up to the Ark's presence in Halo 3. The ODST show a stage of vulnerability, something never before done in Halo because of Master Chief and the Chad that he is. It shows what it's like to be a soldier fighting and holding their ground. As the city gets decimated towards the end by Covenant ships, you can't help but feel sad for what's happened and all the lives it costs as a result of finding the Ark. The great soundtrack and moment to moment gameplay coincide to create a short but sweet experience that is unlike any other Halo game you've played. And Bungie took a risk to try new things, which ultimately worked for the greater good. A different perspective is enough for me to say that Halo 3 ODST is the best Halo game of all time. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe notifications turned on for more gaming content. If I missed anything, comment down below. I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.